No, this isn't really the beginning of the story, but it seems like a good place to start. I guess that's the radio part of me, wanting to start with human highlights. Of course, my newspaper part says, start at the beginning and tell it straight through. So maybe that's the way I'd better do it. This is Mount Clemens, Michigan, my adopted hometown. City of baths, mineral baths, that is. City of roses and some mighty nice people. For more than 20 years, it's been my newspaper beat, and in recent years, my radio beat as well. I like it here. I don't claim folks here are any better than anywhere else. I don't say what they did couldn't be done any place that wanted to. But I do say that these people have done a common thing uncommonly well. Excuse me a minute. Let's see what the man's reading. Sure enough, it's the Daily Monitor leader, our town paper. But I mean, what can be the fascinating article he's perusing inside? <laughs> well, what do you know? It's that little old column of mine, It's All in the Day, by D.A. Yes, I'm D.A., Desmond Arnsby, newspaper man completely unextraordinary. It just happens that I followed this story in fact, I've lived with it, and I'm happy to tell you about it. To give you the background, it's like this. We're just a small town, around 20,000 people. Five miles away is a military base, Selfridge Air Force Base, with several thousand airmen. Now, this is a problem many communities have had to face these latter years. A million young men, many of them away from home for the first time. One in every three, under 21. Why, they're only boys. They're doing their best. Their morale is high. But there's an enemy always waiting for them, that old devil, loneliness. The president was aware of this when he formed the Committee on Religion and Welfare in the Armed Forces. An appeal was sent out. When it hit our town, it fell not on deaf ears, but thank the Lord on warm hearts. There was John E. Sedan, executive secretary of our Board of Commerce. He called a few of the folks together to talk it over. Folks like Mrs. Joseph Blundo, a housewife, who was elected president of the committee. Sam Levine, one of the leaders of B'nai B'rith, and vice president of the committee. Mrs. Ruth Bright, who was elected chairman of the Entertainment and Recreation Committee. Albert A. Wagner, who was our mayor then. Now he's our county clerk. Dr. Philip Mulligan, he's mayor now. The Reverend Dr. Joseph L. Kennedy, president of the City Recreation Committee. And from Selfridge, Colonel James R. Gunn, Jr., base commander with two of his officers, Major Lee Colburn, the base chaplain, and Captain Arthur F. McConnell, Jr., public information officer. Out of this handful went earnest invitations to every civic, fraternal, and religious organization in town. And to their everlasting credit, some 60 of them answered the call. I don't remember now just who started what, but all over town, clubhouses were being thrown open to the boys from the Knights of Columbus to the Knights of Pythias. I remember one typical Knights of Columbus committee, Judge Donald J. Parent, and Reverend Father Paul C. Heenan, and Dr. Raymond A. McCarthy. The Masonic Club Room, veterans clubs, like the American Legion, the VFW, and the Amrits, a place to read, to shoot pool, or watch television. On hand for the Amrits was Post Commander Stanley Pettiprint, and Alvin Keller, one of our young insurance men and junior vice commander for the state of Michigan. And in every church of all denominations, the services were made particularly inviting to the airmen and their families. Dr. Frank M. Field is one of the ministers who is doing so much to renew civilian church ties for these young people away from their home church, too, for the first time. 
Oh, there are so many little ways you can tell when a city has a heart. Little practical things, like a ride pickup station for men in uniform. When a man has a six-hour pass, but buses run only so often, well, you see what I mean. Another way is how the townspeople take these young folks into their lives and into their homes. Walter Fenton was chairman of the Home Visitation Committee. He started off by getting the Kiwanis Club to throw a picnic at his place and invite a bunch of airmen as guests. This is where they had the sack race we started out with. Got the picnic gave still another segment of our society a chance to mix with and discover that the members of our armed forces are individuals. A rousing community scene is a good mixer. And who do you suppose is leading the scene? If you're from anywhere around Macomb County, you don't need to ask. That's right. Walter Fenton himself, in person. Walt is the Kiwanis song leader, and can he make people sing? Oh yes, we mustn't forget the accompanist, Miss Pansy Bell at the piano. Pansy, as far as I know, has the distinction of being the only woman Kiwanian. She's been a member, as it were, and pianist of our club for 20-some years. By such occasions as this, the Kiwanis and Rotarians, Lions and Exchange Club discovered these boys were just like their own young folks. And more and more, they began to invite them to their homes for Sunday dinners. Some of them get right fancy. We're quite a boating community. All summer long, men like Roy Murphy, oil dealer, and Bill Murray, sportsman, come around with their speed boats and take a load of fellas for a spin on the water. Usually ending up at one of their lakefront homes for a chat and refreshments. Here they are at Roy Murphy's place. And look who's here. Some of the Detroit Tigers. That's Paul Dizzy Trout showing them how he throws a curveball. And Jerry Pretty demonstrating to the boys how he gets those base hits. Bill Murray used to be a ball player himself, and the Tigers are frequent visitors at the Murray home on off days. But this is only one of many happy occasions. Other fellows from the base were invited on boat rides. Under Richard Sarnes, Commodore of the Clinton River Boat Club, some just swim, some ride, and some fish for our big Michigan muskies. For the married people at the base, the officers and enlisted men who have their families with them. The town has an official welcoming committee along the lines of the welcome wagon idea. Women of the community call on the newcomers bearing a letter from the mayor and merchandise certificates from our leading shops and stores. They help them find places to live too. Where there are youngsters in the home, the parents are invited into PTA work. The children into the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, or the Brownie. Our servicemen, who are golfers, have a standing invitation to play the links at beautiful Hillcrest Country Club. Teams from Selfridge play in our city leagues in softball, football, basketball, bowling, and other events. And, I might add, they win their share of trophies, too. For those dramatically inclined, there is the little theater group of which some of our pilots and crewmen are members to build and shift scenery or tread the boards as a thespian. The stage is in the Civic Center, open for the recreation of the young people of the town and air base alike. Every other week, they hold a dance. Down the street, in the KFP Hall, renovated to the tune of some five or ten thousand dollars, is our new USO, which gets the alternate play with our Civic Center. I think you see by now that the folks of my adopted hometown are doing their job right well, giving a thought to the lonely service men at their door. But don't think the boys are the only ones getting something out of it. There's a whole new spirit in this town. You can't walk down the street without feeling it. 
that song they sing, the more we get together, the more we get together. Well, there's a lot in that. It's opened our eyes to something we should have known all along, that these lads from way down east, from the deep south and far west, they're no different from our own boys we sent away with pats on the back and a lump in our throats such a short time ago. Oh, we've gained so much. Our town's part of the overall base defense plan. Their fire department is at our service. Their first aid and rescue squad. As a matter of fact, more than 80% of the calls they answer are for civilians. Like I said, we do a lot of boating, but boats can get into trouble sometimes, and many of our people have been saved from drowning. These two couples were sailing in their boat far out on the lake when it capsized. All night long they clung to it, and then a dawn patrol plane spotted them and radioed back for a seaplane that went out and got them. Asked them and their families what they think of the boys of the Air Force. We don't want to sound crassly commercial about this, but after all, the officers and men of the base and their families do spend $15 million a year in our town. And as one of the merchants told me, out of the thousands in servicemen accounts I had on the books last year, I lost a total of only $9. I wish the rest of my customers were as good. I know the CO is very strict about credit, but I really think it's more than that. I think it's psychological. For the same reason, so few of the boys get in trouble around town. Oh, I know someone I want you to ask about what we get from the men of Selfridge Air Force Base. That's Charlie Titus. His pet project is the regular weekly entertainment he puts on for the young patients at the Sigma Gamma Hospital School. Say, have you ever seen a bunch of paralyzed kids in wheelchairs playing softball? Of course, they have to have help, and that's where their friends from Selfridge come in. The youngsters do the hitting, and the airmen do the running. On other, not infrequent occasions, the delighted youngsters from town are brought out to the base where the pilots talk to them about planes and flying. Yes, they're all ours now. Not only the eager youngsters, but the fine, clean-cut young servicemen. Maybe some of them are your sons. I hope they are. But they belong to us, too. We've adopted them. Well, that's the Mount Clemens story. Just ordinary folks, as I told you, doing a common thing uncommonly well. And I'd like to add, if any of our Mount Clemens boys are stationed in your community, they're fine, upstanding young fellows, too. I do hope you'll get to know them. Not for the good it might do them, but for what you'll get out of it, too. Goodbye.